What's up, what's up? Thank you guys for dropping in. Uh, today we're going to be talking about my studio. Um, so I've been getting some comments asking about how my studio was set up, how it was made. You can see that um, we have kind of some uh, standstill textures here to show how it works. But essentially, uh, let's see if this works the way I think it's going to work. Yeah, so we can actually see that um, it's a little laggy right now because i got a lot going on at once. But all of the movements are tracked in real time inside of the studio. Uh, so it's pretty interesting how that's set up, and it works really well, assuming you have a, a computer powerful enough to do it because mine is obviously struggling a little bit with um, having all of this open at once. But it's not too bad. It, it, it really isn't too bad considering everything it's doing at once, including we can see in the background here, um, I believe it's, what is my switch key? Let's see. Let's exit that real quick. Let's go into my blueprints. And I have everything organized really nicely here so that I can make some videos on how everything is done. But the Nintendo Switch toggle is L. Okay. So if we hit play, let's go over here. And you can see that we have a Nintendo Switch running. Uh, there's some lines on the screen because my lighting is having some issues, but um, that's just a really temporary issue. And this is a live Switch. So I have my Switch controllers here and I can actually go in and uh, load up a game if I want to. Uh, oh, there's an update, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and update that. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's close it and update. So this is actually my live switch. If I hit L, uh, we can see that I have a nice little interface for the switch here. I really need to fix those lines, though, because that's really annoying how that looks like that. But let's wait for it to reload. Thanks for dropping by, by the way. And there we go. So it's reloaded. Uh, let's connect my controllers again, load up Animal Crossing and see if it loads this time. And this is um, all streaming in from an Elgato game capture. Uh, so it's actually able to take any kind of HDMI device. So I could plug in my Xbox, I could plug in my Switch, uh, PS5, um, or even my computer, which I do often uh, for Zoom calls. So I can have a guest on the screen in the back and myself here in the studio. So that works really well. Um, and we can see that the screen is actually duplicated all around the scene. So we can actually look at the same scene up here, and it's very, very high quality. Um, if we zoom in, it is a full 1080p um, resolution screen in here. So if we zoom in, we're getting all the definition that we normally would get um, from the game if it were actually on that screen. Uh, so yeah, we can see that it's on all the screens in the studio, including this little one down here and these ones up here. And I can control it with uh, my gamepad. Uh, the way I got that working, and I'm going to combine that with how I got my uh, camera working uh, in my little desk setup here. And you'll notice that any direction we go in, the camera turns so that I'm always facing the camera. I'm, I'm running into things. Um, the plane turns so that I'm always facing the camera. And no matter where I move, it'll still be appropriately facing the camera, which is really useful. So let's exit this. And let's take a look at how it's actually done. Um, if we go into any of these textures, I'll go into this texture first because it's the most difficult. Um, I'll open that up. And you'll see that we have a texture material. And the texture sample is actually a media player file. And the media player file, I'll show you how to make, but it's essentially a, um, a direct link to our webcam. 
Um, and then it takes that and applies a chroma key to it to get rid of the green screen. I have painted my wall in the back uh, green. So the green screen actually gets taken out using this chroma key alpha here. So the chroma color is green, um, which we can adjust to make it more closely that green, but chroma key does a pretty good job at understanding the range. And then um, the image color goes in here and we output the raw comparison to the opacity mask and then RGB to the emissive color. And that makes our screen actually emissive so that if we had something in front of it, whatever color was on the screen would actually reflect off of the other object as well. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty simple media material. Let's go ahead and take a look at the um, the media file. So uh, this is essentially a playlist of one media player and it's webcam MP 2021. That's just what I happen to name it. If we open up that media player, um, we can choose. Uh, so let's find it here. I'm using Snapcam player. Um, that's an awful, that's not it. Uh, and then what you do is you change to your chosen webcam. So I'm using Snapcam. There it is. And then um, we just save this under the playlist name. Um, once you choose your video source, it should look fine, but you can go to playback options and change video um, to choose different resolutions. Uh, most webcams will have uh, 720, 1080, all the different choices. And you can also change the video track. Um, and it's the same kind of deal here. So you have to find the right track and the right video source and make a note of those numbers. Um, if I go to my other webcam, there's actually like 40 or 50 different ones to choose from, um, like 1080p at 60 frames a second, 1080p at 30, 1080p at 15, um, 720p at 30 frames a second, 720p at, at 15 frames a second. So it's just, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, so you basically choose this as a media source and that's how you get the webcam in. Now you'll notice I didn't choose my actual camera, my camera here, I actually chose snap camera. And what that lets me do is, uh, let's go ahead and load back into the scene. So to add a, an added layer of immersion, making it seem like I'm really 3D, um, I added snap camera support. So I can do things like this and add a helmet on me so it's still live but i have a helmet on uh same thing with like a little glitch texture i can make myself look uh like a cowboy <laughs> a knight this year ah a demon so it adds more to the illusion of being in a full 3d space uh, so that's why I use Snap Camera instead of the direct um, camera feed. Uh, for you, hello, hello. Thank you so much for dropping in. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, that's how this texture is made. And then I have a blueprint attached to it. Um, let's go ahead and edit the blueprint. And this just rotates the plane to point towards the camera. So we have our set actor rotation. And then we get the location of our plane. We get our camera. We get the location of that camera. And then we find the look rotation using the find look rotation function. And then we break that into the X, Y, and Z directions. And um, we go to make rotator and set the axle rotation to the new rotator. The reason we have this 90 degrees here is because it might not be directly facing the plane. So for mine, I added 90 to the rotation. So if it's this way or backwards, you can add 90 to turn it or 180 to turn it all the way around. Uh, so that's what I did here. And then um, we set the new rotation and that causes the plane to follow. Once I load back in, come on. There we go. So no matter what direction I look at myself in, it rotates to face the camera. And this will work with any camera that is the current camera. So if I change to this one, it's still facing the camera. Um, if I change to this one, it's still facing the camera. I could point and it's always facing the camera, no matter where I go. So uh, that's how I get that rotated. 
And then we use a similar technique for the uh, video screens in the back. Um, if we open up the material, I just don't have a uh, chroma key on it. I just have straight texture sample to the media file. So we open up the media file and we open up the media player and we choose where that input's coming from. In this case, we go to video, we choose our game capture HD, and there we have our video file. This is where we have some playback options to choose from. Uh, we have video, it goes from 1080p all the way down to, uh, let's see. I guess it's just 1080, but we could choose all these different uh, frames per seconds between 60 and one. So uh, I'll choose 60 there. And then under video frame, there's two different frames. We can choose between them to see the difference. They look pretty similar. So we'll leave that and then you just save it. And uh, that'll apply the material to those video screens. Um, in order to get them to play in game, there is a level blueprint blueprint you need to add. So in our level blueprints, I have the begin play and initialize webcams function. So here we use open source and we choose our webcam and uh, we choose our webcam media player. We delay it three seconds because it actually takes a second to open the media uh, our webcam source. So after three seconds, it sets the video track. We set the frame rate to 30 and we set the track to zero and format to zero because in Snapcam, zero is the default. Then we do the same thing for the game capture device. We open source, we make a new variable for um, our media player, and then we set the video track uh, to 60 and the frame index and track index to zero. Once those two are started, uh, they load up the source in game and it works on any object that the material is applied to. And that's about it. That's how you do the cameras in um, Unreal Engine and get them to pull from live sources, including webcams and game, ca game capture devices, uh, including other screens if you have them connected to a game capture device. I'm going to continue this series in the future with um, information on how some of the other effects that I've added to the um, to the project have been created. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. What? You've never heard of Stream Savers? And you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers. And it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price.